Ah, France taking that one by three sets to two to upset the uh, Brazilian fans in Curitiba. This was the French side arriving earlier today. Looking in good spirits. A team that have been playing very, very well during the preliminary stages. A team that finished top of the preliminary round. And a team that are looking to get a victory over Brazil yet again. They beat them in the preliminary round and they beat them by three sets to nothing. Chinanese, the only player who won't be playing in this one, Laurentini. Resting him, he may well make it back for the medal matches if, we, if uh, France could get there. This was Brazil arriving. The players making their way off the bus. A couple of noticeable absentees. Lucarelli, who's missed the, all of the VNL due to surgery after uh, tearing his Achilles. And Fonteles, Lipe Fonteles also not here. The other influential outside hitter for this team. Two players who guided Brazil to the gold medal at the Olympic Games in Rio in 2016. Two players who will be missed by Reynan Del Zotto, the head coach. One player who is back with the national team is Murillo, the former outside hitter who retired but is now back and ready as a libero. Souza in your picture, a player that is doing uh, a really great job in the middle slot. This is currently how things uh, finished. The top eight, as it were, France top, Russia second, it was USA third, Serbia fourth. Brazil finishing fifth and qualifying through, had a bit of a wobble towards the end. And that was how things ended up. Korea being demoted from the VNL, and it's Portugal who will be coming in next season after winning the Challenge Cup and the right to be in the VNL. I'm delighted to be joined by Mark Lebedew, Australian head coach. We've already seen one cracking game today between Russia and Poland. That was a great game. And we've got another one to come here, Mark. This should be an absolute joy, shouldn't it? Uh, I think joy is a great way to describe it. It's, uh... Two of the top teams in the world uh, playing against each other. The French team is in really good form. They're playing at home. Uh, they'll be really fired up. Brazil uh, did it tough the last couple of rounds to qualify. They needed to win. Uh, after a big hiccup in round five, they needed to win uh, in the last weekend, uh, which they did uh, against Australia, as it happened, in the deciding game. Uh, and they'll be ready for this one. Well, this was the coin toss earlier on. Andrei Zenovic, the head referee. This is the head-to-head -head between the two teams. Brazil with, well, a massive lead, but that was then. And right now it's France, who are the form team. So in the head-to-head, -head, a few players that, well, to look out for. Engerpeth, the enigmatic outside hitter for France, and Wallace de Souza. Opposite hitter for Brazil. Two players with two distinctive styles. Yeah, they're really two guys that will be fun to watch tonight. Uh, both of them are a little bit different from anybody else. Wallace because he's so fast and so dynamic. Uh, Engerpad just because he's... Engerpad is the best way to describe it. He just plays the game a little bit differently to everybody else. He sees things a little bit differently and... If you're a volleyball fan, you can always learn something about the game just by watching him play. Boyer, yeah. one to watch for France. 
He's been one of the top opposites in the league. Both of the French opposites have played quite a few matches and uh, done really well. Uh, Boy has been the better of them. Stylistically, he's actually quite similar to uh, to Wallace on the other side. Not a big, not a big guy, but fast and on the ball fast. And uh, theirs will actually be a pretty good battle tonight. has come to an end. The players now Please making their way uh, the to the sidelines where they will the step out onto court. The and we'll get ready for the national anthems for both the teams. The Championships 2018. The man of the moment, the man who retired from the game at one point, but now he's back as a libero. It's a great position for him. He's always the, the guy with great ball control who was organising the others. I saw some games of him in the Brazilian league where he was really the dominating personality on the court, even as the libero. So uh, I don't know if he'll play much tonight. They've been playing mostly with, uh, with Haas. He's an excellent player, uh, but we'll see how the game evolves. Ladies and gentlemen, may I ask you, you stand for the national anthem. Time then for the national anthems for both teams. Mesdames et messieurs, veuillez maintenant vous lever pour les hymnes nationaux, en commençant par l'hymne national du Brésil. Fantastic rendition of the national anthem from the players and from the fans who have flocked in here to watch this one. 
if that doesn't give the players goosebumps, well, nothing will. Time to meet the referees, Andre Zenovic and Russia is the first official for this one. Very experienced referee. And he'll be ably assisted by Nasser Chaban of Egypt. We'll wish those two the best of luck. We'll know if they've had a good game because, as always, we won't notice them. Time now for the teams to make their way out onto court. The starting sevens for each. We will start with Brazil. This is some of their team's best bits so far in the VNL this year. And setter Bruno wearing number one, who will be the playmaker. Through the middle is Isaac, number two. Through the outside, number five, Lucas Lowe. Wallace, number eight, is going in the opposite slot. It's Lucas Sackham, 16, through the middle, and Maurizio, number 19, through the outside, and the starting lead row will be Thales. That is who Renan Del Zotto has put his faith in for the start of this crunch game against France. Time now for France to come out, starting with the captain Benjamin Tomiuti, who will be setting. Surprises as to who the Libro will be. It's Jenna Grubenikov, number two. It's a strong team for France. It's a team Kevin T believes can get the job done here and also no doubt believes can go on and potentially win this inaugural VNL. A team looking to win back to back championships, back to back World League titles. This is how France are lining up. In the front row at position four, Tony U2 starting at one. And this is how Brazil are lining up. Maurizio is in the back row at one, and it's Lucas Lowe in the front row at four. What an atmosphere we have got here. We haven't even played a point yet. The players are ready, the fans are most definitely ready for this one. It's Brazil in the yellow and blue serving. It's France in all blue receiving. It's game one for both these teams of the men's FIVB VNL finals here in Lille. Bruno making a good dig. It's still in play. What a rally. And that one's off of Boyer and out. And it's Brazil who take the opening point. Goodness me, what a start to this match. If they keep up this pace, I think we're all going to be exhausted by the end of the game. First point on the board for France, courtesy of that unforced error for Maurizio. 
And that will send Ingebert back to the serving line. Well, it is so noisy here, you can't even hear yourself think, and we're only two points in. Ingebert was the best ice scorer for the tournament in terms of percentage, but also a high error rate. France trying to get their middle running. But it is Brazil who get the ball into transition and take the point. That's a nice start for Lucas Lowe. No doubt there'll be a few nerves for him. I don't know that he started in, uh, in some, any big events. It might be his first time, so he'd be happy to have that point on the board. Douglas has been starting outside hitter for Brazil, number 14, in the absence of Lucarelli and Lipe. But it's Lucas Lowe getting his opportunity. That's a really good pickup from Tilly. But it's an error from Engerbeck as he tries to hit the 50. It's a really good start for Brazil there. Block and defense is standing perfectly. They've had no, France have had no chance to score yet. They ended up making it more difficult for their defence. That's a really great swing. He's a unique player, Wallace. It's not particularly a star that you'd be teaching anyone new to the game in terms of approach and hitting. He's made it his own, it works. Oh. It won't stay in play. Massive swing from Isaac. In contrast to Engerpair, Wallace has been a much more effective serve, even though his ace percentage has been low. His error rate is also really low. He puts a lot of pressure on the, the other team and keeps it high. This is an absolute of the 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 They'll have a little, they'll have a few nerves, as experienced as they are. Uh, even the best players have nerves when they play in a big event. The Brazilians have come out really focused. As I said a moment ago, their block and defense is staying perfectly right now. Uh, obviously, it'll take a few moments for the French to find a way past, but they will. Good work from Ingepet, taking that one off of Nagoff. And then getting all the way back to cover. Side of the antenna from Burr. Brazil will take the point. Brazil learned a lesson from their previous rally before the timeout where they blocked when they didn't need to. Boy had nothing to look at, so he couldn't get inside the antenna. Position. 
I'm going to stop that very good swing from Lucas Lowe. That was a situation just made to destroy middle blockers' hearts. The ball was close to the net. Uh, Bruno made a little hand fake. Middle had nowhere to go. One against, ends up being one against one on the outside. And it's an easy point. so well in block and defense just making any change can sometimes affect the way the the other team is seeing the game Rossard being left-hander uh, could, could well do that Angerfest won that one. 
but uh, I'm sure we'll see another couple during the course of the day. Like, you know, you know, you know, you know. Fecha todo mundo para cá, fica ligado e para a esquerda aqui para não pegar no contrapé. Tá bom? Falando os três o tempo todo. Resta tudo certo, galera. Tá? E outra coisa só, bola que toca, no bloco tá sendo ali já vem passando na frente. Tá? 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 Even though you're not allowed to talk under the net, that doesn't mean it doesn't happen. You'll see no doubt plenty of afters, plenty of little looks here and there. These players try to put each other in their pockets as it were. got this lead or deficit back to something that's maybe manageable. They can get another two break points perhaps before the second technical. They feel like they'll feel like they have a chance to win the set. It's a nice pass from Lucas Lowe. and Lucas Lowe, and the Ritz go where it's going. But Brazil held their ground in the lot, they got a good touch, got it into transition, and then Gouveia does what he does best. Even then, the uh, block there is pretty good. Engelbert had to work for that point. They just seemed to get a little too far in front of Lowe. LaRue is a real all-or-nothing server. He could serve six aces in a row, he could just easily serve two under the net. Dig from Lipslow. Lipslow oh, yeah. looking for fingers. Did he find them? The referee says no. Lipslow, oh, oh, please, is not going to ask. Well, that's such a challenge. So another great defence from Lucas Lowe. Maybe that set was just a fraction too fast for the transition of Maurizio. A good swing from Maurizio that time on the right side of court. We have a feeling that we'll see that the set dropped a little bit short. He had to step in on the ball, which brought him inside, away from the blocker, and ends up being an easy point. They like to use him a lot in this rotation when he's in position two. So the block was ready again, but on the second attempt he could uh, squeeze it through. serves as hard as Engerpan and uh, Rossard and Wallace on the other side. It's really important how you manage that reception and if you can keep it high enough you can still play fast and look as low as able to score.
fast he gets on it before the blocks over to push over the net. It's really tough to block at that speed.
we really do. And Bruno had put the short serve in on Enkipen to try to take him out of the play. Got the option that he wanted, but Boyer could still score. What a shot that is. Great shoulder strength. He's tight to the net. Set the pipe. He's got a free swing for Lucas Lowe. <laughs> Surprised they didn't get a double block on that one. That's it. probably the play they were exactly the play they were looking for. It's a really good reception for the players there. It's a strange body position he ended up making a perfect ball. Wallace has that strap in on him, any ideas to run. It does put a lot of weight through that leg in the lines with that hitting style of his on the right side of the time. The Brazilians would have been pretty sure that Ingepen was out of the play after that reception. And it turns out they were wrong. Block out for Lucas Law. So Bruno knew much about that one. No reactions from him. He was trying to take the point. So a similar start to the Wallace. Uh, really steaming in on the short ball and getting a sharp cross court. off the back of that congratulate him for the pass. Lucas Low with the set. Rizzo into the front row now. It's a massive front row. He's uh, going to court for Brazil comes. He's going to go number 17. Another. So also in with him. Double substitution for Brazil. Just as well as it does. Set. Oh, that's so unlucky. 
Macbeth furious with himself. He had a shot there inside the triple. He could go. He didn't have to take a really big angle. He only missed that by a really small amount. That's why he's, uh, why he's angry with that one. Not just because it was a big point. Caesar coming in to serve. It's set point for Brazil, but not before France caught a timer. So it gives the Brazilian time to think about this. Ice to serve, so to speak. Hop là. Information from Hawkeye about the set of contact points. Of that first set, this is Brazil. Yeah, you can see how good their reception was. 66% in a really good position uh, against 47% from France. And that's the position where the, the setter has a chance to play first tempo, which forces the opposing middle to stay in the middle of the court. Anything outside that green circle means that the the middle blocker uh, will almost certainly be able to make a double block. And that was uh, what we talked about just before about the uh, Brazilian serve at the beginning of the set where they got their decisive run. A very interesting start. Just wondering whether or not Brazil have caught France a bit by surprise after that first set victory. I don't know that there's too many surprises, but. They, Brazil was certainly a little bit more ready to start the match than France. Uh, I don't expect that uh, will hold down. Second set underway. Tonuti with the serve for Brazil. For uh, France against Brazil. As Brazil with the first set and it's France to take the opening point. No changes for either side. Anyway, that from the room. No. 
the one-on-one -on -one situation for Wallace is just such a disaster for the block. He really has no, doesn't know where to go. Wallace can bounce it in both directions. It's a very lonely feeling for the blocker. He's full reach finding LaRue. Look at that from Isaac. Even though Isaac jumped early, he was coming over. He's still able to stay in there long enough to get a touch off of LaRue. And it's LaRue who takes the point. And the pet now to serve. And that was close. to hitting one of the receivers on the way out. Which in FIVB competition you cannot challenge. Wallace, it was the block. It should be the block apologising. <laughs> should be okay. There is a reserve referee if needed. The referee's lost his head cam. to serve for Brazil. Zenovic got as uh, the ball hit in from that play from Wallace. We get any time to react. Oh, no gets it. That's a really good play. Gapes seeing the triple block, knowing that he had that space over in front of Wallace, and Wallace couldn't get there quickly enough. That's one occasion where it is a good set, and there's quite the tips on a good set. Ritchie with a bit of work to do. Oh, unbelievable! Oh, what a shame it didn't come back over. Incredible defence from France. You know, Rossa got a really big piece of that, right? In the beginning, I thought it was going to come back into the middle of the court, but there's a couple of great actions from uh, Thales in that rally. The reception, the uh, high ball set, he's having a good game. Brazilians haven't been able to apply the same pressure just yet that they, from the service line that they had in the first set. That's with their noses in front in the second set. Lucas does what he does best. Such a great player. A player that always generally appears to be going deep to five or deep to one when he goes through. He doesn't try and bury it. Inside the three meter lines where the traditional competitors are waiting. Doing that, he opened up the whole big 
to the first technical turn. That's the answer for the lead by one set on the It's actually the first point on serve or the first play point for the match, of, sorry, for the set so far. So it's been really neck and neck. We'll, be see, we'll see if France can uh, build a little break here. Come off the Benikov. He's in a 
taking the point. I think Mar it was Maurizio who blocked the pipe or got a touch on the pipe from Angerpet. It's where he wouldn't normally be expecting the blocker to be. Turned into a great transition opportunity for Brazil. As it once again. Maurizio has to be careful with Tom Uti as a goal for two. No refs to worry about that, Lewis. As it doesn't get the ball in play, three point for France. Say, okay, we're good, we want a piece. 
Lots of individual battles between players going on. Both sides of the net into the second technical time. France leading by two. In the first set, it was Brazil who had the four-point lead in the, to the first technical that they could hold all the way through. In this set, it was France who had a two-point lead really early on. Brazil haven't been able to make any inroads in that just yet. I wonder if the set will progress the same as the first set. With both teams playing so well, the opportunities for those play points are few and far between. They've been playing together since they were 14 or 15. They would have made their play thousands and thousands of times in the past. And they played alongside each other nationally, but also domestically. They went to Italy together and played. That's a great swing. That was the one that he was angry for missing in the first set. waited a little bit and that extra time that he waited gave Boyer the chance to get to that strong blocking position. Still it's in play, it's not hit the floor, no challenge coming mid-rally. It's Brazil will take the point now. Tilly is going to try and challenge but as you just said it is too late. He needed to challenge that in rally. The FIDB rules, they have to challenge that as soon as the action happens. So that's the challenge requested, but they're, but they're not allowed. As it wasn't the last action, as we just said, it's not something that Tilly can challenge. He to have challenged at the minute he saw it. Pass. 
Emotionally, though, he's hit the antenna with a spike. First break point chance class that uh, Brazil created for a long time. They'd be pretty disappointed that they couldn't score that. That might be the set going just there. But Brazil have called for a challenge. And maybe they feel that the ball... But it seems the most strange thing, Brazil calling on their second to see whether it did it the antenna. Well, it didn't work the antenna. So quite clearly did hit it, quite clearly is a fault. We call that one in the business of timeout charge. Serve and it's Sousa who puts the ball on the floor. Sousa who's coming for Isaac. Alcos also on court there for Brazil. Lots of changes going on. William also in. Evandro also in. The feeling. The two things are that Isaac has given the set up. And he really believes that these changes are going to make a difference. Jumping in the middle, one on one outside, France take the point. In the case of the double sub for Brazil, it's something that they've done for many years now. They do it without fail every set. That's a great swing. Souza with his first meaningful swing at the net, hammering this one day. Yeah, the set is pushed, is pushed past the middle blocker, so he ends up with a free court to uh, just destroy the ball. Four set point chances now 
four fronts.
Just a continuation yet this time from France. And now they might have an opportunity. Well, it's wasted. It's a net touch by LaRue. Just when it looked like they got a handle on what Wallace was doing. back to the serving line. Yeah. Yeah. Really good reactions from Lucas Lowe. That's something that we see a lot more now, is players willing to hit or attack rather than second contact. And we can see how effective it's there. It can be right there. Certainly a feature of Brazil's play in the preliminary rounds. If they get a free ball over and can hit on the second, they will look to do that. Wonderful pick up by Grabenikov. It is Frustrating France, a frustrating Brazil once again, but all off the back of a magnificent pick up by Grabenikov. It's a really good block to start that rally. They got the perfect transition that they wanted to have through the pipe from Maurizio, but Grubenikov was up to the challenge. Well picked up. Brazil come knocking again. Souza comes up with the point for Brazil. I think Brazil really needed an emphatic point somehow to give themselves a little bit of momentum. They really struggled to side out the last little period. So they'll be happy to have an easy point if it was at the end of a long rally. Still well in this set, though, obviously. Playing the mark, Lucas Lowe, playing his volleyball in Turkey. For a half bank. Trying to see the Brazilian team play their volleyball in Brazil. Blockers in front of him, he thought that he has to go for a bigger angle and dragged it into the net as a result. Nice play, Russia working the block. The Brazilian defense will be thinking right now they need it to be a little bit more on that side of the court with Bruno in the front row. That's a break down there. Huge hit from Lucas. Lucas and Bruno sharing some opinions between themselves there. The view from the net cam. Beaten. An excellent serve. That's a real captain's play by Bruno. They wouldn't 
normally want to go after Grabenikov on the float serve, although the French are receiving with two. Rossard's not at receiving the float serve, so there is some open court there. But still, to take on one of the top liberos in the world and serve an ace on him is a, a real leader's play for Bruno. We'll see if that can give them a little bit more momentum uh, leading into the next sec the second technical timeout. Some actions from the new cameras we have here at the finals. Giving us some super slow-mo of the players hitting through the outside. I haven't seen that view before. Bruno gets ready to serve again. Brazil edged in front in this third set. ball for France. And boy, this time gets it off the block and away. And you can see that serving target for Bruno, not only trying to make it difficult for Bubenikov, but also for Boyer to come around him and have the first swing, but in the second chance with a free ball, no bother at all. I don't know that there was anything wrong with Boyer's first swing, it was great right defence by, by Bruno, but getting it behind the set is really often a good option. Celebrating. No challenge coming from Brazil. Even from this vantage point, it looked pretty clearly in. And from the slow mo. Nice work from Maurizio, just changing it up. Frustration, Lucas, as he puts the ball away through the middle. We're going to go back to him and say, well done, well done, good job. Everything in this team goes through Bruno. Nice lead for Danica. Quick to make 
make his decision. Lucas was hoping that one was in. He wanted his coach to challenge it, but it would have been a bad challenge. Characteristics, so the block will have to change a little bit to in response. Oh, it's always a tricky one for a left hander to have to deal with. That particular ball has got to come around and back in and doesn't have a really good angle as perhaps a right hander might have done, but it's a great block from Susan nonetheless. He was probably going for the right hand of the middle there next to Bruno but he didn't quite get it. Take that swing with conviction very often, as, a, as in just then, you can make your point. Well, only do you do well to get that block out, but also stay on his side of the net. Broad jumps of these players is for him. Well, the second technical. Is he in front? Yeah, they've been able to lift their service pressure, put the French under a bit more, uh, a bit more pressure in their side out, and. Uh, they had a couple of really good transition opportunities, so we'll see what the crowd does in the next five minutes to lift the French again. Functional, handing that one through the middle. 
He's made a difference since he's come on. He's given them a presence in their first tempo. He's got a couple of really big blocks. Real statement makers. shot to get it past the block but the defender still couldn't get it. Absolutely perfect. And Tommy Uti sends it behind to Boyer, who does the rest. The Brazilians went for the trick play on the overpass. The middle block is set it straight out to position four, but the team that trains every day with anger pads can't be uh, surprised by trick plays too easily. Good pass from Tyler's after that ball clip the net. And wonderful blocking though. 
from France, they were reaching way, way across. Balls just didn't, didn't quite make it to the outside. Lucas had no, Lucas Lowe had no chance to swing at it. The cover will be disappointed they didn't get it. serve for France. It's an excellent serve. Oh, goodness me, what an opportunity wasted by Le Goff. Oh, no, there's problems here for Maurizio. I didn't see what happened there. Well, we were all watching Le Goff hit the ball out. Maurizio looks to be in some discomfort. He's holding his right knee, but the knee with the brace on it. This will be a worry for Brazil. Douglas is the natural choice to replace him, number 14. He's busy getting warmed up. Just goes to... Oh, there it goes. Tried to take the court. You could see as he just put his weight through his right leg, he jarred it. Oh, and his knee, you can see. That doesn't look nice, but it does look a little bit like he's damaged that ACL. Similar injury happens for the USA. For McDonald, he went to hit a ball and through the outside, landed awkwardly, straight leg landed on his left leg, and, it, and you could see similar thing just moved and went out. He went out for the game. It's uh, in the Hoffman Estates earlier on. That's <laughs> Manapai, yes. It was Jeski who did his knee. McDonald then came in. A similar thing in that well, Maurizio taken off. Fortunately, he's got that strapping on, and that knee brace he's got on does have some strapping around the side to protect that lateral movement. Could have been a lot worse potentially. He's just showing where it is. So he's out. Douglas is in. That'll really change the way that Brazilians uh, will have to set up because he's been taking a big part of the court in reception. Uh, Lucas Lowe's been focusing only on, on attack. Now they'll have to probably change that a little bit with the guy coming straight in off the bench. We just saw the pictures of Chinonese who's already got strapping on. It's a nice on his ankle. That's not started this game. Rizzo goes off for Brazil. And it's an error from Miniel. Miniel didn't get a ball off the block. Looks like Brazil are going to go on to take this set as a timeout's been called as that went through Bruno's arms. Hey, I'm good. that they can do this, they, they can get back into this set. Lanta certainly getting the crowd going. Oh, 
swing from Evandro. Evandro's the second opposite in this team, but in his uh, club life, he plays for Santa Cruz area. So he's got lots of experience playing in big games under a lot of pressure. Showed absolutely no sign of pressure putting that one away. Set point now for Brazil. Souza with the side. It's a great serve, he's just exiting a play. Brazil take the set 25-21 and they lead by two sets to one. Brazil really picked up the pace in that set. They, from the body language, from the energy in the stadium, they locked in the first part of the set that they were out of it and that France had a chance to really run away with it, but they, they hung tough. They got a couple of aces that they hadn't had in the first two sets really changed the momentum here we go it's three aces counting the one at the end and uh, the french weren't able to respond right away so they have chance to regroup and start all over again but uh we'll see that and brazil will have to do that too without maurizio who's a key stone in their game interesting to see whether or not france don't think that they're serving how they change what they're doing with that respect Perhaps we feel that perhaps going in the channels between Douglas, between Lucas could have issues for Brazil. We'll see how their communication holds up. It seemed that Brazil were taking uh, Lucas Lowe out of the reception and trying to get him involved with the pipe, which they did with some success, not a lot of success. If they go back to three receivers uh, to cover Douglas a little bit, that will change how they might be able to use the pipe. So it'll be interesting how they uh, manage those different situations. They could just go straight and play with uh, first tempo plus Wallace, which might be a reasonable option anyway. Two options here, the highlights as we've been on that to set. I've taken. about that's for sure. Some unbelievable plays throughout that set, throughout this match. The level of volleyball, absolutely astounding. Still in a great position, but they are now definitely under strength with their starting players for this set. Maurizio has left the stadium, has gone to the dressing room to receive some treatment. Douglas, I think a bit like Lucas Lowe, okay, guys that don't play a lot, but Douglas has already got, he's got an Olympic gold medal. Uh, he's been with this team for a long time, although he's not been a starter, he's sitting with a player that's come in and he's had a very good preliminary rank for Brazil. Now he has to step up and deliver. Away we go with the full set. France serving, Brazil leading 2-1. And Brazil putting that ball away. Wallace again with a ridiculous angle. As you, you mentioned earlier on, uh, it's so difficult to block, because you actually, when, as blockers, you're picking up the attacking run of the, the guy coming in, and you see Wallace's attack run, but it's nothing to where he actually hits the ball half the time. No, because of the way that he jumps, it's also his arm is not exactly where his body is and there's a whole lot of things going on that, that make it tough. Nice block out from Boyer. While Wallace is doing his thing, Boyer is quietly hitting his uh, whatever it is, 60%. Half on his 
not allowed. There we saw some indication of what they might do, how the Brazilians would change their reception. We saw there Lucas Lowe receiving just with the Libero and Douglas being available for the pipe. Great knee by Gravenikov. Fast. I won't say he had no chance, but that's a tough one to do. Tough one for Bruno. As he gets tooled, he has to forget that now, organise his offence. Interesting choice by Brazil to set their floats there for a Libero in their rotation. game and in the Russia Poland game that we saw earlier. for France, doesn't get back to help where he normally would be after serve reception. And really, Grubenikov should have dug it, but the speed of the, the transition makes it difficult. Douglas now, his first serve of the match. Now. Oh, what a pick up! Oh, Rani's still going! Not any longer though! Engaber brings the fans to their feet as he hammers that one away. It's a mega rally! That is a mega rally. Great play by both teams.
run out of superlatives at times. Just incredible. That's just a great hit by Ingerfeld to finish it off. That's a runner rank for Benikov to get in there and still have the swing, beat the block. Just incredible one. France now have the lead. So like the serve. The lesson from the last rally is that anything in the middle of the court, if it's high enough, uh, these guys have a chance to swing at it if they have a chance to swing and have a chance to make a point. Oh, that nearly caught Boyer. Bit of dodgeball. Oh, did catch Boyer. Well, in fact, he's been given his in. Well, it was all going on. Almost a game of dodgeball. Boyer got out of the way of it. And uh, France are challenging the decision as to whether or not that was in. The referee was pretty certain to call that one in from his position. It's not one that they would normally overrule unless they were really, really sure. Well, if this challenge has been refused, it's because the referee believes this is hit boy air. Didn't hit boy air. So, in fact, the challenge is going to be coming, and the ball is balls. Well, we have a decision. Let's have the point. We're into the technical timeout. Brazil are unhappy. I would like to see that one again because I'm not sure that it didn't hit the French player. Boy, I was uh, leaping like a cat on a hot tin roof to try and get out of the way of it. Ellis now with the serve, point gifted to Brazil with the get touched by Maru. And the path gets it past Bruno. It's a great serve from Tonyuti. It's a great read from Grabenikov to get that serve into a decent position. Tonyuti pushed it out long distance. Just got a glimpse. Mauricio's back on. He's got some heavy strapping, so. Got a bias nice round his knee, but he's back onto the court and watching the rest of this match. Got a proper risk, no doubt. We'll have to get it properly assessed as we see this one again. It's a challenge coming from Brazil. So he thought that was in. Brazil's way. Play from 
Douglas. He's done well since coming in. It's the uh, sorry state for Maurizio at the moment. Iced up, taking no further part in this match. But Douglas stepping in and doing a great job for him. sure that the ball would go to anger pad in position two so they left Bruno against the first tempo. You need to wake up a bit earlier to fool Tonyuki. Both of those attacks, he looked like he was reaching out to get a piece of that ball or to, to hit the angle. He's going for a bigger angle there than he really needs to. He has a big hole in the block. But under pressure, he's trying to do a little bit too much. It's interesting when you see him in, that, in the super slow and you watch him talk about his actions being a little bit early. He's going to move in front of the ball. He doesn't get his head to through the ball. He just collapses straight through the ball. That one particularly. No spin on him at all as it went up. The spin is more about where on the ball that you hit rather than any action that you make with your hand or wrist after the contact. And it's looking to be more aggressive. As they look to keep this lead and extend it if they can. They've got a chance here. And they're taking it. Lovely play from Russell. Was in the pipe since the half out halfway through the third set. It hasn't really worked out for the hallways. And that was probably not a good choice by Bruno to set that ball. That option. Andro and William in. Set to the back row for Brazil. Something we see teams doing a lot of where they've got the opportunity to do it. Setter in the back row, three front court attackers for six rotations plus. <laughs> Lovely play from Boyer, the fans go crazy. the boom ringing out around the stadium as we see it in slow motion. Off looking round, wondering where it had gone. And a great pipe attack. That was in a better rhythm than the last couple with Bruno. William, very much like Bruno, likes to have a little look through the net as the ball comes into him to see what's going on before making his mind up on where to set. <laughs> Almost by Gravenikov, but not quite. Lucas apologises to Gravenikov. He'll be saying, well, if that didn't bother me, it's another little dig that bothered me. It's a really nice transition move. If the first tempo can get on it that fast, it's really tough to defend, and Lucas has a club of an arm. And then France, for the second time, Vaz can put the ball away.
see William in the front row that often in this double sub situation. I imagine that uh, Rossard could get this next ball. Another chance here for France. And this time it goes over the top of William. Williams that didn't touch it. Rossard's made an error. And Tony Uta took some real time and care to give him that high ball so he could just go over the top of him. That's right off the head of Rossell, but he's all right to carry on. Pretty good chance to score there. Thanks to the second technical timeout. But it is, you know, I believe. Like against the little blocker isn't always the advantage that you think that it'll be. What you'll often see is that the spikers will just think, okay, I can, I have the little blocker in front of me, I can do whatever I want. And the little guys are really often actually good blockers. They make good position, they don't move their hands around like the so-called better blockers do. Or just the what the case was in a couple here is that they're focused on, well, I have to hit line, I have to hit line, I have to hit line, and maybe don't take what's actually ends up being the best shot in the situation. Have a look at some of the uh, super slow mo. is ringing out once again here in the stadium. Still going on. Well, a really nice set from William on uh, that free ball situation. He had a hand fake to get the middle off the ground. And then the opposite could score. That's one block. Oh, what a block for William. You were just talking about the small blockers being the smart blockers. William almost doing a lap of honour there as he's put down Inga Pair. Fantastic. No second chance there for William. Inga Beth makes sure of that. That one's straight over. Tony Uti where that goes back to Inga Beth. He re establishes himself through the outside. Well, that brings us basically back on the serve. One more side out, William goes to the back row. Nice work. In the chase by William. Great yeah! play from Inga Pan with the improvisation. Yeah! He's kept the straight hand, William. Inga Pan going with his non dominant hand. Yeah! Off serve. Swing from Evandra. We're completely different kind of player to Wallace. Sending that one out to Boyer. He delayed the set just long enough that the middle had to stay in the middle. And that little space is enough to open up the whole court for Boyer. Straight 
possession for Leroux because he kept his hands in the air and he got a piece of the ball, but France unable to get it into transition. The defenders were all moving backwards, expecting the hard ball or the high ball off the block. Just drops on the three metre line. It's not often Tony Uti stays on the floor to make a set. That's not often he sets for position four in that rotation. Well, they get past if Andre with ease. The block, uh, middle block was definitely not expecting that one. set for the taking here. It's a big front row for Brazil, with Evandro and Lucas Douglas in there. Front court options for Clinton Saido.
struggling here. And it's a massive block from Brazil. Goodness me, when it looked like that ball wasn't going to make it in court to start with. That block was uh, very, very far over the net. This will close down with interest. Oh, yeah. As usual, outstanding, unpredictable. So far in the game. Just about every position on court. Oh, he hasn't done, he's had a quick hit, right? Set goes to France, 25-22. It's 2-all, and that means we're heading into a decider. It's not going to be really interesting to see. Yeah, both teams are a little bit at the end of their energy levels. Uh, France a little bit of an advantage coming into the fifth because they have this pretty impressive crowd behind them. As we uh, always say, it's another 12 minutes to go. You only have, only have to pull yourself up for 12 more minutes. This now then a race to 15 to see who will take this match. Captains with the first referee. And it's going to be France receiving. Brazil will serve to get the fifth set underway. Brazil with 11 errors in that last set. It certainly helped France's cause. There's no technical timeouts in the deciding set. And once the team gets to eight points, the teams will change ends. The coaches still have two timeouts, they still have two challenges. They still have to win by two clear points. Yes, exactly that. It's just brilliant, isn't it? Such great support. And here are the highlights from the last. Fifth set, about to get underway. Anyone's for the taking, but Brazil, perhaps with a slight disadvantage, the injury to Maurizio. And they're very influential outside hitters. It's perhaps their understrength in that area in serve receive. Spiking, but Lucas Lowe's played fantastically well, and Douglas, since coming on court, has done well also. Bruno with the serve. Fifth set underway. Oh, it's a great start here, but that's a chance for France. Lovely pick up that by Lucas Lowe. Douglas with work to do. Well, this is just like the first point of the match. An incredible rally. Finished off by Inga Peth with an incredible spike. You're exactly right. That's exactly how the first set started off with a really long rally. Great action from both sides. But it could be a telling point that Inga Peth scored the first point of the set. with the serve for France. Nice finish from Douglas. Both teams are matched up evenly. 
It is Bruno starting at one, the set up. Tonucci went back to position one. Both players in the back row, both teams with three front court attackers. It's Douglas with the serve for Brazil. Good covering by Rossard. Nice play. Oh, Lucas with a little bit of afters through the net as Egapet missed that one on the sideline. This is the rotation where they serve a, they set a lot to Egapet. They read the first one, made him hit a second one, and Lucas took his hands away to stop the block out. He just couldn't get his weight forward quickly enough to get under the ball. And it's France who take the point. And that ball, when it hits the block, it adds a lot of extra spin on it. And it often dips in front of the defender, who it looks like he should get it. But it's out of his reach. Get back to the serving line. up in the level it is world-class volleyball one is delivering the point for brazil another tough reception for Tales on a spinning serve wallace threads the needle lucas with the serve now for brazil The goal pops up through the middle, Tony Uta finding it brilliantly. I would have thought Susan would follow that first tempo a little bit further. Good choice by Tony Uta. Covering by Tales. Still in play. Not anymore. France take the point. France edge in front. those joust balls where the timing and strength are all part of it. And you can get two or three in one rally. Not to be for Boyer from the serving line. Good slow goes back for Brazil. Picking on the front court swing hitter for France in the form of Rossard, but it's a great ball in from him that allows Tom Uti to go to the middle. Server he is, and he's just come up with a beauty. He's a guy who can hit at a consistently high speed when we played against him in the, earlier in the season. He was every serve over 105. Douglas just, just wrapping it off of Tom Newton's hands. Brazil have their side out. France in a good position here. France have the 
they slide out here. They have a two-point break at the change. That gives them a pretty nice advantage on the change. Assuming they slide out here. Sees it, it is to serve. He's not had a good serving run of late in this match. Side it is who gets the ball off the block and away. The teams will change ends. It's Hart leading 8-6. It's race to 15. Well, you've done a really nice job in this set on the reception. But it's definitely the first part that you know, Ross Hart's here. It's the first part they've had all for, for a couple of sets. That sets the first tempo. Now I'm playing with Inga Perna. Because time after time after time, he's had to make that run and not get the ball. And it moved no point as he can say, well, I'm not going to get it. He has done. Let's have the lead. We've got a little bit of the serve. The trouble for Brazil is Tales and Douglas got caught up. And Bruno was a little bit unsure what to do. Well, Douglas was out of the, out of the attack possibilities. And the reception wasn't high enough for Bruno to make a real choice. We had to get into the first tempo from that body position is tough uh, for anybody, even for him. And uh, you don't see Sarah's on his left words for your team just to keep focused on what you're doing, keep away from the scoreboard showing. At 6-9, you still have every chance to win the set, obviously you're not the favourite at that moment, but you always feel like you, like you have a chance if you just get the next side out. Uh, Bruno goes back to serve, then they get to serve against uh, P1 in two rotations. to it, free ball for France. Great pick up, another free ball for France. Lucas making the ball over, Douglas back into position. And it's an unforced error from Engerpeth. Way to stick in the rally by Brazil. We often say that our object is just to make them hit one more ball, always make them hit one more. They hit one more ball, it's another chance for you to block, it's another chance for them to make an error. If you give them three free balls in a row, it doesn't normally work out your way, but sometimes it does. Are well, they clutching at straws here, France? Looking for a montage. By the way, got a bit of a delay. It's gone through the hands, no touch given. 
delays on a challenge like that. You don't waste your time out. We're ahead of the set. Focus now with the serve for Brazil. Put up by William. And a great put away from Wallace. That's the first time that Tom Yuki said the expected ball. The Brazilians were ready for it and had a great swing from Wallace to win the point. It'll be interesting to see what happens on the next one. Brazil bringing the horse back. Play from Boyer, got that swing away before the block could get finished. It's a really nice pass to swing. It has to be disappointing. It's a really nice pass. Good pass. He missed his last serve when he went back. When he gets it right, it's very difficult to deal with. It's a gift for France. Surely now any doubters supporting France must now be believing that France are going to take this match, but not before Brazil have pulled a timeout. They still have a shot here, but it's definitely not a good one. Oh, 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 Great blocking by Souza. And still Brazil not giving up, not giving in. And that's out against Rio. His serve count, it's now match point for France. That's what Rizard coming in, it's a setter for setter swap, but it's also about the blocking as well here for France as they try to shut Brazil down. Boyer back to the serving line. Great swing from Wallace. And match point saved. There is a challenge though. Oh, the ball's miles in. We talked about miles in, I think it's uh, a country mile in. Rabenikov was really, really wishing that that one was out. I think they were just challenging to see how far it was. Brizard's gone off, Tom Uti back in. Best chance that France have got to win this one now. One side opportunity. Lucaslo back to serve for Brazil. In 20, 
17. They have beaten Brazil by three sets to two. It's a great victory for the hosts here in Lille as they get off to the perfect start. That is a great win for France. They did it tough in the middle of the match. At the end of the third set, you would have to say Brazil were a bonus to win the match, but they stuck it out. Egan did it. Boy, were excellent for France. But they found their points from other guys in the big set. to Maurizio, crucial in the end. They had a pretty nice rhythm when Maurizio was in. They had him as a main receiver, let Lucas Lowe do a lot of attacking. It does look like Maurizio's on the court now, he's walking around, so... Perhaps the injury is not that serious. At least not long term. We we'll hope to see him back on court very shortly. Hopefully for the next game, they'll certainly be needed by Brazil. They now have to win their next game to have any chance, potentially, of going through to the semi-finals. This is the stats from the match overall. Only three points in it in the end. A fantastic performance from France, and we can now hear from the wonderful outside hitter from France, Engerbeth down on court, and we can get to hear what his take on this match was. Erwin, you have already beaten the reigning Olympic champion. How does that sound? I mean, it's the VNL finals. Yeah, it's, um, it's very important for us to start, uh, start like this. We start with a lot of pressure, I think, and we don't start very good. But uh, it, it's important to win also when, when okay. you play bad. And I'm, so, I'm sorry for, for Brazil because they, they lose one player today and it was also more easy for us to play because it's one player, a lot of important for us. So it's okay, we win 3-2, we are happy and we continue the competition. What made the difference in the end? What made the difference? I don't know, maybe in defense. Maybe in defense at the at the end we we we, we play very good in defense and uh, maybe in reception also. They lose, I say to you, they lose one player or very good in reception. So the stability is, wasn't the same and uh, like this. Erin, enjoy the moment. People going crazy there. Thanks. Indeed, enjoy the moment. They have a victory. Perhaps coming into this one, they may have felt it would have been easier. They were pushed all the way by Brazil, and at one point it was looking as if Brazil may go on to take the game. But it is France who have prevailed. They have their points on the board, and they have kept the fans very happy indeed. Spikers, Boyer, followed by Engerpeth. And as you mentioned earlier on, Mark, it has been those two who have led the way for France. And this is where the uh, hit points have been for France. Tony Uti spreading the play right across the net. What a delighted French team can warm down and we can have a look at the highlights from the match. Day one complete, two games played, and it's France who top Pool A, Russia who top Pool B. Serbia and the USA yet to play, they'll be in action on day two as they look to make their mark. And for Brazil and Poland, it's the worst possible start for them. And the games that will be coming, USA will be taking on Poland and Serbia will be up against Brazil.
France taking a rest. And so too, Russia. We do hope that you can join us for both of those games. If they're anything like what we've witnessed on day one, well, it's more world-class volleyball to come. But that's just about it from all of us here in Lille, from myself, Clayton Lucas, and from Mark Leverdue. We hope you've enjoyed the volleyball as much as we have. That's it from all of us. It's the end of the broadcast. Thanks for being part of the game.